watch enthusiasts. Now today I'd like to talk about these two watches in front of me, and these are Undone Urban Chronographs. And this is a watch which initially caught my interest when I was emailed by Undone a few months ago due to their movement uh, choice and also the customization of these watches, um, which is very, very extensive, and uh, I'll show you that later on in the video, because if you know, as you've noticed, I have two watches in front of me. And the, the movement choice also impressed me because it uses the Seiko Mecha Quartz movements, which are, are known for their accuracy, but also due to the, the way they're, they are, they're made. Uh, they offer a, a very high quality, especially for this, uh, this price point, in a package which at this point is very budget friendly and well, constru and well constructed for around the £250 mark, which sits, sits well below the usual four or £500 chronograph seen with this movement which really did impress me, and this was further um, uh, shown when I had a, a look in person at these watches, which are beautifully made in terms of case construction, as well as a very, very carefully constructed dial with, with very attractive finishing, which really did impress me. But of course, before I begin this video, I would like to emphasise that I've not been paid in any way, shape or form to review these watches, and that I really uh, review timepieces of a quality which I personally would buy, and therefore I really must stress this, view is, this review is very much impartial, and isn't embellished for the sake of um, uh, the sake of um, of of, of uh, presenting this watch as better than it is, um, but truly um, as a watch which I would recommend myself and which I've seen to be as very very high quality, um, with a with a very interesting brand behind it. So the watches are presented in this rather nice and very nicely finished fabric style of box, which is very very simple and a simple slide assembly as you can see, um, with the details of the watch on the front, the date of purchase. Um, in, the, in my case, uh, these are sample watches, but um, um, but uh, for, for uh, customer bought watches, they would have the date of purchase on the front. And similarly, it describes the specifications in a little bit, a little bit more detail. And one simply has a, a rather nicely finished leather toggle on the side, which one can use to open the box. So I'll just take both of these watches out of their boxes and give you a closer look at these, these rather attractive timepieces. So here are the two watches side by side. So we have the Killy um, uh, spe standard specification model on the left hand side, and then the custom model on the right hand side. And I'll talk about the custom model in just a bit after I've talked about the general specifications of the watch and the features of uh, the Killy and the off the, sh off the shelf models before talking about the, the very, uh, uh, the, well, very substantial customization one gets with this watch with regards to producing a timepiece which really does fit one's, uh, one's own preferences with regards to dial choices, hand choices, case colour, um, as well as uh, any personalisation one wants on the, on the timepiece itself. So I'll just put that to one side. Now over here we have the Killy, and it's named uh, so as a result of it uh, we being inspired uh, by the Rolex Dato Compacts. And this is one of the, the Rolex uh, chronographs before the Daytona was, was released. And, uh, and it indeed was worn by, uh, by Jean-Claude Killy, who was uh, a very uh, well-known skier, an Olympic skier who was uh, an ambassador for Rolex. And so as a result, uh, this watch is, is named after that uh, as it takes inspiration from its general design. And the dial of this watch is a really beautiful affair. But before I start with that, I would like to talk about the case, because for so many, the case is a very defining feature when it comes to buying a timepiece with regards to wear and also the way it fits on the wrist. And this watch has, has been chosen, I think, quite carefully with regards to having a 40 millimeter case. So it's not, uh, it's not on the large side where a lot of um, uh, dress chronographs are erring these days, but one has a, a still substantial wrist presence with a thickness thanks to that, that heavily domed crystal of 13 millimeters. But it does sink into the wrist thanks to that, uh, that domed case back as well, which makes it all the more comfortable on the wrist. The finishing on the case is very attractive in my opinion. One has polished tops to the lugs with these very attractive bevels put in, um, which do break up the silhouette of the watch, but still, as I've said, make it appear quite substantial on the wrist. And then one has these flat ends to, to the lugs, which also lends to a, a more masculine air about this watch. And then similarly, on the, 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 be the bezel, rather, one has these two bevels, um, which, which allows the, the watch to slip under a cuff extremely easily, in combination with that crystal, which, I, which I'll talk about in just a moment when I'm addressing the dial. And the sides of the watch feature this, um, this, this vertical brushing, which I think also works to make the watch appear slimmer than it, it is at 13 millimeters, And again, works with that case back to slip into the wrist and make the watch altogether more comfortable. Then on the opposite side of the case, one has this onion crown, which is, is a really wonderful piece um, with the undone logo in, in its, uh, its tip. And then similarly, one has the two chronograph pushers placed at their traditional places of two and four, which makes them very easily pressed, as you can see. Um, and 
of course, on the dial, one has a great deal of, of different um, uh, different aspects to talk about. And this is only one of, of 22 different dial options for this timepiece, which uh, does lend, uh, lend in for a lot of, uh, of choice. But talking about the handset first, on this watch, one gets the, the Leaf style handset. And these are, um, uh, these are IP uh, style of, um, of bluing. So it's not thermal bluing, but then at this price point, one really couldn't expect it. Um, it's uh, quite very works. It's it's never seen um, in terms of having having blued hands at this price point. Um, really, only watches around the thousand pound price tag start to have thermally blued hands. But they've done a very good job of these hands to make them attractive and and blend in with the general design very well, and also make them a very very legible in sort of an uncanny way. One wouldn't have thought this would what this watch would, would be particularly legible, but it turns out that it really is. And in terms of the layout of the dial, one has this this uh, bicompact style with the, the, the different um, subdials placed vertically about that central axis. So one has at the, the 12 o'clock position the, the, uh, the minutes counter for that chronograph, along with, uh, with the, the running seconds at the bottom of the dial. And this does mean the watch is, is almost perfectly symmetrical, really, um, with the only changes being the numerals on the sides of the dial, um, which I think makes this watch all the more attractive and gives it sort of a 1930s charm without looking old-fashioned and while still looking contemporary. And this is only further emphasised by the Art Deco style of, um, of numerals, of Arabic numerals going around the dial, which are perfect for this watch, really. And these match the hands extremely well with a soft but sharply executed uh, piece. And around the edge of the dial, one simply has undone at, uh, at six o'clock, which I think is a very nice and subtle branding, which is rare, especially at this price point, where a great deal of, um, of large text is seen on the dials of a lot of these watches. It really is wonderful to see undone taking a far more relaxed um, uh, look at branding on a watch. And then similarly around the edge of the dial, one has a, a, a tachymeter around that, that edge in blue, in dark blue, which is, is again a functional piece and, and would be useful for the sort of 1930s chronograph this watch harks back to as sort of a piece for a gentleman to time various aspects of his life. Then one also has a telemeter seen often in, in military timepieces of that era, where, but, but judging from the, 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 the sound and light, um, and uh, also starting the so one one would start the chronograph when one sees the light of a, an, a, a, the enemy's guns, if you will, and then one would um, one would stop the chronograph when one hears the sound, and this would give you a rough estimate of the distance to that um, that target, which is something one can also use for for, uh, uh, for thunderstorms as well, which is is a quirky aspect on this watch and an attractive feature, and this all runs through the Seiko VK sixty three movement which is a mecha quartz movement, and in fact, in the, the custom watches, one can get an exhibition case back to see these. Um, though I personally, I'm not one for looking at quartz movements. I find them to be very clever, and especially with a watch this clever, with the fact that it has a, a quartz backing, so a quartz battery, and indeed a quartz uh, oscillator. Um, and uh, this allows the watch to be very accurate, far more accurate than an equivalent um, mechanical, and really the only watch is more accurate than, uh, than a quartz like this would be a Seiko spring drive, for instance. Um, or anything comparable. And in this way, this watch is, is impressive in, in terms of offering a mechanical module placed on the top of a quartz assembly, which means, as I've said, you get that quartz timekeeping. But when you start the chronograph, it runs very, very smoothly across the dial, which I think lends to a, a much more attractive uh, aspect to this watch, and I think really does make the watch for me. And as you can see, it, it does flow very nicely, and only times one hour this watch, but, uh, but really for this sort of timepiece, you wouldn't expect a 12-hour chronograph, especially from a movement of this type. And of course, the, the, the chronograph can be stopped and then reset. But similarly, if one starts the chronograph and allows it to run, this watch has a flyback function, though not like a, a Breguet Type 20, for instance, where it flies back and then starts again. In this case, it's just a quick reset, which is very useful if you suddenly have to time something else um, and, uh, and have to prepare for the timing. One can simply do this, and it resets it straight away, which is a very useful feature. And the case back doesn't offer much information in this model, though I'll show you on the custom model there are really a great deal of options offered by this flat expanse of polished metal, where one has uh, undone water-resistant 30 metres, um, and then 316L stainless steel, um, which is a another good thing to see on this watch. They have taken the care to produce a watch in, in 316L when a lot of brands cut corners and use 304, which is less corrosion resistant and a little bit less hard in terms of scratch resistance. Now, the dial is also a beautiful colour in terms of being this, this wonderful, very, very light custard sort of colour, or, or a very sort of uh, accentuated cream. 
And it's quite a long way from the standard whites one would expect to see on a watch like this, but also complements those, those wonderful Art Deco numerals beautifully to give a watch which genuinely looks like a watch created in that era um, of, of luxurious chronographs, which were designed to do a job in a very different way to a modern watch. And this is only accentuated further by the fact the watch has these beautifully recessed subdials, which sink into that chronograph dial and show the quality of this watch even further, and, and also accentuate the fact that the dial is, is in its entirety domed, so it actually is lower at its edges, which makes the watch look a little bit more like, like one of those porcelain dialed chronographs, but with all the charm of a painted dial. And uh, this is topped off with a beautiful K1 crystal, um, which is double domed in this case and curves over the top of the watch beautifully. And K1 is a crystal which sits between mineral and, uh, and sapphire, as it has the shock resistance of, of mineral, because it is a form of mineral crystal. But it doesn't quite have the, the scratch resistance of sapphire, though it does offer a very, very attractive uh, compromise between these two, and, um, and indeed does offer a, a very good level of legibility, um, which, which actually does, um, does surprise me, because in most lights, even at uh, rather strange angles, one can still read this watch very, very clearly. Now, I've been very impressed by the straps as well offered on this watch, because for this price point, they really are beautiful quality. And they're these handmade leather straps, and in this case, I've got two calf leather straps. But they do produce a, a vast number of other, other strap options, from Perlons to Cordura-style straps, to various other styles of leather um, or crocodile grain, which I think complement their particular watch uh, well. And these have a slightly waxy feel to them, the way the leather has been finished, um, which in this case is more of a distressed grey. And as you can see, these are handmade. Um, and, uh, and branded rather nicely. And also the buckles are similarly signed very, very nicely. But one aspect of these watches that I would like to talk about is the fact they offer uh, these uh, quick-release spring bars. And I've talked about these quite quite a lot on, on, on other brands, um, but what I must say is, is excellent about these, which I've seen is some, a problem with a great deal of these quick-release spring bars, is that with a great deal of brands, these spring bars and these, these um, quick-release straps aren't compatible with other timepieces. And that's for the simple reason that they have a different diameter of end, usually larger than other watches have uh, holes in their lugs, which means one can't interchange these straps, whereas these ones I've found have uh, a universal size of, of tip, which means that one can change these, these straps out onto other timepieces if one so wishes which is a real benefit and does make these altogether more attractive for, for a prospective buyer, um, which, which certainly is, um, is, is a useful feature to have. And especially since these scratch straps are such a nice quality, it'd be great to have several of them and to be able to swap them out while travelling without having to carry a tool at all times, which can be a bore, really. And, uh, and also, if one doesn't do it in the most careful of conditions, one can end up scratching the back of one's lugs, which is a bit of a shame, really, if one has a, a watch which one really cares for. Now, this is a watch which I designed on their website, and indeed the second one sent to me. And this is a watch which I was able to choose the various options for and the various styles of dial, hands, um, case engraving, and, and so on. And so, as a result, because I haven't seen anything else like this in the watch industry, I'd like to take you through the designing of this watch, because it really has impressed me the way one can, uh, can design a watch really to, to one's own specifications, um, to make something a little bit more personal, especially at this price point. Um, where really um, uh, most brands produce a, a great deal of, um, um, of, of, of large quantity um, uh, watches which aren't, 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 don't have that personal touch that one can have with, with extremely high-end watches. So it really is wonderful to see a brand which is offering something much more personal. And so as a result, I'm going to take you through the various stages of production um, to, uh, to, to show you the options available. Now, the first options one's given with, with regards to the, the watch is the case colour. And one gets various options in terms of having a, a, a raw stainless steel finish, which is my personal favourite. But alternatively, one can go for a PVD or a rose gold or, or yellow gold uh, colour of finishing. And I must say, PVD does offer this watch a great deal in terms of making a, a more stealthy appearance. Um, but I personally, um, and this is one area where I, I disagree with customization, because I personally wouldn't recommend something with a gold tone, simply because gold plating or indeed uh, PVD gold can come off over, over time and leave you with a watch which is left different colours, which personally I find very unattractive and does detract from the, the look of a watch, which is why I personally stick to stainless steel. Though, of course, for those who do enjoy a gold uh, tone watch and, and, and don't want to spend the, for the, well, the fortune, really, that one has to spend to get a gold timepiece, 
This does offer you with the option of having a watch in that colour that you like. Now, the next options one has are the dials, and there are various different options with regards to, to vintage style dials, or indeed more modern styles. Um, and I personally went for the, the Portu dial, which is a, a style of, um, of, of aviation dial, which I found particularly attractive, with its, uh, its, its darkened indices and its very attractive and legible finishing. Now, in terms of hands, you have the option of these leaf-style hands, or straight hands, or loomed straight hands. And I ended up going for white uh, loomed straight hands, because I thought they matched the style of this watch in general, as uh, a pilot's watch with its, its uh, legible dial. And also went for a silver second hand to, to match the watch a little bit better as well, in terms of that case colour as well. But one really does have a great deal of different options with regards to this um, uh, this this design, and the price does go up slightly. But um, but really, you're only going to increase the price uh, for this whole process by about thirty five pounds. So I must say, when one's already considering a watch of this price, uh, thirty five pounds doesn't really make all that much difference in terms of having a watch which is far more personal to what one one enjoys seeing. And then in terms of straps, the the watch is offered on on a great variety of different straps from. Uh, from their, their broken styles of luxury leather straps to their calf straps, which are more distressed, and indeed rally straps in a plethora of different colours. Um, and I ended up going for a yellow uh, um, yellow style of calf strap, because I thought it matched those, those, those faded indices beautifully and brings out the watch as a classic pilot's watch very, very well. Now, with regards to the case back, one has one of two options. Either one can go for a glass case back, uh, an exhibition case back, where one can see the movement uh, quite clearly. But because it's a quartz movement and isn't decorated, I personally would rather have an engraving. But certainly it's rather an interesting option if you want to have a picture printed onto the case back. And this is something I haven't seen before, where they'll laser etch a picture of your choice onto the case back, which allows you to have this, this glass picture, if you will, to further personalise the watch, which really is a, a touch which I find very, very attractive. And similarly, one can, one can have a solid case back, as I've gone for with this watch, with, uh, with an engraving of one's choice. And I ended up having Arm on the Watch Guy engraved on the back of the watch. And it's come out beautifully. It is laser etched, um, but they've done an extremely good job of, of giving it a very deep laser etching to, uh, to give it a, a, a sort of a deep and, and substantial feel rather than the very thin la laser etching one can sometimes see on these watches. So that's the general process of producing this watch. And the full price comes to $335 or about £260. But um, as you've seen earlier on in the video, and uh, indeed as I'm going to put again now at the bottom of the screen, um, there is uh, the discount code um, in order to get a, a certain amount of money, in this case 20% off the next watch from, uh, from their, their brand. And here is the finished product with its beautiful matte black dial with those beautiful indices, which really do, um, do, do, do allow for a, a wonderful look on this watch. And they are loomed as well, as you can see with those two pips, which I'll just move these minute hand, those two pips at 12 o'clock, as well as those single pips at all the other indices which allow for a watch with, with wonderful legibility at night. And the loom will only last about four hours, but then with indices this small, it, it wouldn't be expected really to have much longer lasting loom. Um, so as a result, one does still have a, a great deal of legibility at night. It also has rather beautiful details, such as the concentric patterns, which I, I'm not sure you can see um, on, the, on the, the, sub, uh, the sub dials there, which allow for a, a, a real aesthetic of, of high quality with this watch which is again matched by the, the beautiful um, uh, writing in, in that Art Deco font on the dial of Aeolus, um, the, the Keeper of Wind, um, which I think is appropriate in terms of uh, being a pilot's watch, and then I'm on the watch guy engraved on the case back, which makes this watch a really attractive piece, especially on this, this rather nice um, calf leather strap. And I'll just put the watch on my wrist and, and, then, uh, and, and show you the way it fits in terms of its case shape. And here is the watch on my wrist, and as you can see it fits very nicely, though it does wear quite flat, it's very thin lugs and also that very thick strap allows the watch to sit very, very comfortably on the wrist along with that case back that sinks in nicely. And of course, the, the, sh the case shape and that 40mm size really is fine. I, ha I have remarkably small wrists, um, so, so I must say um, this does give you a sort of an ex extreme view with regards to the way this watch wears. But as you can see, the lugs don't pass over the edges of my wrist and it does sit very comfortably. Um, and with that thickness, it does slip under cuffs very, very easily. And similarly, the strap is very, very compliant out of the box due to the fact that it is that, that distressed style of calf um, rather than a more, more, um, more dress-orientated leather, um, which, which has its advantages in certain cases. But certainly for a, a pilot's watch like this, or indeed a chronograph, uh, a land-based chronograph like the Killy, um, certainly makes these straps very appropriate for that type of watch. And of course, they are handmade straps too. Now, I'll just take the watch off and conclude this video. 
Anyway, that concludes my video on these very interesting uh, chronographs, which I must say do offer a great deal for the price, and I really have been impressed by in terms of their quality and finishing, which uh, really is, 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 um, is better than I could ever have expected for this price point. So please do leave your comments down below as to what you think of these pieces and indeed these um, these movements as well, um, as well as taking a look at their website if you're in the market for one of these um, and using my 20% my off code ARMON20, um, as you can see and have seen throughout the video. So uh, thank you very much for watching and please do like, share and subscribe to help uh, help the, the channel and to enjoy more content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching. This is ARMON the Watch Guy, over and out.